Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another episode of this video series on skew tees and hodographs. Uh, in our last video, we left off talking about some different thermodynamic parameters that we can find from the skew tee, such as the uh, equivalent potential temperature, the virtual temperature, etc. Today we're going to talk about uh, some indices that we can uh, calculate using the skew tee that help us assess the stability or instability of the atmosphere. And this will be the last video of this sort of mini series within the bigger series on these sort of parameters you can calculate from the skew T. Now just a disclaimer, disclaimer before we start. These indices are sort of broad overviews, broad assessments of the stability of the atmosphere. They are pretty limited in their usefulness because they just take into account a few different levels and a few different variables of the atmosphere. They really don't take into account things like, you know, convective inhibition, capping inversions. So these are limited in how useful they are, but they do have some forecasting significance and some of them are calculated on the SPC sounding. So we will show you how they're calculated here. So the first stability index we'll find is the lifted index or LI for short. And the lifted index is pretty simple. It's just the difference between the environmental temperature at 500 millibars and the parcel temperature at 500 millibars. So all we do, we take our environmental temperature at 500 millibars and subtract the parcel temperature at 500 millibars. And that's it. And um, this is a decent sort of metric for instability. And the more negative the lifted index, the more unstable the atmosphere is. Usually positive values of the lifted index um, generally signify a stable atmosphere while negative values tend to signify a more unstable atmosphere, a better chance for thunderstorms. So let's find our lifted index in this example. We'll, we'll find our first, find our environmental temperature at 500 millibars. So we just go to the environmental temperature profile at 500 millibars and kind of trace it back down. Looks like it's somewhere between the zero and the 10 degrees Celsius isotherm, a little bit closer to the 10, so we'll say minus six degrees Celsius. And then our parcel temperature at 500 millibars. So we just go to our parcel trace and find the temperature at 500 millibars, which looks to be about, oh, minus two degrees Celsius. And then you just subtract the two. You plug them into this equation here. So our lifted index here is going to be minus six degrees Celsius minus minus two degrees Celsius, which gives us a lifted index of minus four. And even though these uh, do involve temperatures here, degrees Celsius, the lifted index is unitless. It's usually just given as a number. So in this case, our lifted index is negative four. So that signifies that our environment is somewhat unstable. Um, but again, it doesn't take into account a lot of different things. It only takes into account the temperature between uh, of the environment and the parcel at 500 millibars. Doesn't take into account, you know, any convective inhibition we might have at other levels of the atmosphere. So just because your lifted index is negative four doesn't mean that you're going to get thunderstorms for sure, even though the lifted index might suggest that the atmosphere is unstable. So we will log our lifted index here as negative four. All right, the next stability index we'll look at is called the Showalter Stability Index, or SSI for short. And the Showalter Stability Index is pretty similar to the lifted index, but instead of using the parcel temperature at 500 millibars, we're going to take a parcel and lift it up from 850 millibars and then find the temperature at 500 millibars. So the SSI, Pretty simple. It's just like the lifted index. We take the temperature of the environment at 500 millibars, but then we find the temperature of an 850 millibar parcel lifted to 500 millibars. And I'll kind of abbreviate that by sort of 850 millibar parcel to 500. So as we saw in our lifted index calculation, the environmental temperature at 500 millibars is minus six degrees Celsius. But now let's find the temperature of our parcel lifted up from 850 millibars to 500 millibars. So all we do is we go to 850 millibars, find the LCL, 
uh, and then lift it moist adiabatically up to 500 millibars. And the temperature of the parcel after we do that at 500 millibars is our is this variable here. So we'll start at 850, go dry adiabatically, follow the dry adiabat up from our temperature at 850, follow the mixing ratio line up from the dew point at 850, and where those two intersect is our LCL, and we just follow the moist adiabat up to 500 millibars, so right there. And the temperature at that point is going to be the temperature we're going to use instead of our actual parcel temperature um, that we lifted from the surface uh, to 500 millibars. So the temperature here, here's our zero isotherm, here's our minus 10 isotherm. It's kind of right in the middle, so we'll say minus 5 degrees Celsius. So we plug those into our equation down here. SSI in this case is going to be minus 6 minus minus 5, which equals negative 1. So our show alter stability index in this case is going to be negative 1. So just like the lifted index, the more negative the SSI, the more unstable the atmosphere is. Of course, just like the lifted index, this doesn't account for wind shear, so we can't really tell the severity of the storms or whether or not we're going to see supercells or just general thunderstorms. But it shows us how, uh, it is another measure of how unstable the atmosphere is, similar to the lifted index. So our Showalter stability index is negative 1. So we have a decently unstable atmosphere given our lifted index of minus 4 and our SSI of minus 1. All right, now let's find a parameter called the K index. And the K index takes into account the vertical distribution of temperature and moisture. So unlike the lifted index, unlike the Showalter stability index, the K index takes into account moisture directly in its calculation. And the way we uh, calculate the K index is we, f we find the difference between the environmental temperature at 850 millibars and the temperature at 500 millibars. We then add the dew point temperature at 850 millibars and then subtract the difference of the 700 millibar temperature and dew point. So these are all environmental temperatures and dew points here. We're not taking into account the parcel profile in the K index calculation. But so even though I didn't really denote that these are environmental uh, profile uh, parameters, just know that they are. So the higher the K index, the higher the likelihood of thunderstorms. And it's a decent assessment of the likelihood of usually air mass thunderstorms. Uh, we talked about that in previous videos. Air mass thunderstorms are when you have um, only the sun to heat the parcels near the surface and allow them to rise. So the solar heating is the main lifting mechanism. When you start to factor in wind shear, um, the K index becomes less and less important and less accurate. Um, and of course, the K index itself does not take into account wind shear variables. We'll talk about parameters that do take into account wind shear when we go through the hodograph portion of this um, series. But the K index is a decent um, assessment of usually air mass thunderstorms. So the Arizona monsoon, maybe a general thunderstorm set up on the plains. The drawbacks of the K index, it again tells you nothing about storm severity, whether or not you're going to see supercells or general thunderstorms. It doesn't factor in wind shear. And it can't be used if the surface pressure is a lot is less than 850 millibars. So let's say you're up high in the Rocky Mountains and you want to assess the likelihood of thunderstorms. The K index is not going to be good to use because your surface pressure is a, is a lot less than 850 millibars. So let's calculate the K index here for this case. So we start off, let's find our 850 millibar temperature. Uh, so let's go to our temperature profile, find it at 850 millibars, probably something right in there. I would say, let's say that's about 27 degrees Celsius. And then let's find our 500 millibar temperature, which we already found. That was minus 6 degrees Celsius from our lifted index and Showalter stability index calculations. How about our dew point at 850 millibars? So our dew point go over here, it's going to be right in there, something about, oh, right about 10. It's pretty much right on the 10 degrees Celsius isotherm there. 
and then our 700 millibar temperature and dew point. So our temperature at 700 millibars, right about there, gonna be something like, oh, let's say 12 degrees Celsius. And our dew point at 700 is gonna be right in there. So probably something about four degrees Celsius. And then we just plug those into this equation. So I'll do that up here, so our K index. And again, these, these indices are unitless, so I'm, I'll drop the degrees Celsius units here. So 850 temperature, 27, minus our 500 temperature, which is minus 6, plus our 850 millibar dew point, which is 10, minus the difference of the 700 millibar temperature and the 700 millibar dew point. So we simplify here. We'll do the parentheses first. So this becomes 33 plus 10 minus 12 minus 4 is 8. So 33 plus 10 is 43 minus 8. So our K index in this case is 35. Uh, so usually when K is greater than 35, and these are kind of just general guidelines, uh, a K index of greater than 35 means widespread thunderstorms, while a K index less than 20 usually means um, a very low chance for thunderstorms. So here we've got a K index of 35. Looks like there's a decent threat for scattered thunderstorms in this environment here. And again, the K index not used a whole lot, as are these other indices. We've got better ways to find the likelihood of thunderstorms uh, come the afternoon. Um, but it's a decent, it's a decent uh, variable, and it is calculated on the SPC sounding. So I wanted to give you um, an overview of how it's calculated uh, here. So let's plot our K index. K index is 35. So the final stability index we'll talk about is called the total totals index or TT for short. And the total totals index is calculated by adding together something that's called the vertical totals plus the cross totals. And the vertical totals are calculated as the difference between the 850 millibar temperature and the 500 millibar temperature plus the cross totals which are calculated as the dew point at 850 millibars minus the temperature at 500 millibars. And an easier way to write that is we, after rearranging the terms, we would add the 850 millibar temperature to the 850 millibar dew point minus two times the 500 millibar temperature. Just makes it a little bit easier to work with after rearranging the terms. So the total totals index, just like the others, when the total totals index increases, the likelihood of thunderstorms also increases, i.e. the more unstable the atmosphere is with a higher total totals index. However, just like the others, uh, it doesn't account for wind shear, so you can't really tell the severity of the storms, whether or not you're going to see supercells. Uh, and just like the K index, it doesn't work if your surface level is near or above 850 millibars. Just like we said, if you're in the Rocky Mountains way high up, your surface pressure is going to be much lower than 850 millibars, which means that this total totals index would be pretty useless. So let's calculate the total totals index here. And we'll start by finding the 850 millibar temperature. Again, we just go down here. Well, I think we said it was 27 degrees Celsius from our Showalter or our K index calculation. Our 500 millibar temperature is negative six, as we found before. Now our dew point at 850 is going to be just go to 850, be somewhere in there, and 12 degrees Celsius, probably a decent estimate. And that's all we need for this. So let's plug it in here and find our total totals index. So in this case, our 850 millibar temperature, 27 degrees Celsius. Again, I'll drop the units because the total totals index is unitless. Plus our dew point at 850, which is 12 degrees Celsius, minus two times the 500 millibar temperature. So 
which is minus 6. So 27 plus 12 equals 39. Uh, minus 2 times negative 6, so that would be a plus 12. So our total totals index in this case is 51. So general rules of thumb for the total totals index, anywhere from 44 to 49 is good chance you'll see thunderstorms. From 50 to 54, better chances for severe thunderstorms, and 55 or greater severe thunderstorms with the possibility of tornadoes. Of course, I kind of find that you know hard to believe because this variable does not take into account wind shear. So it's hard to say just from looking at the thermodynamic um, characteristics of the atmosphere that we can tell whether or not we're going to see tornadoes. But in an environment of high wind shear, if you see a total totals index greater than 55, there is perhaps a better chance for severe thunderstorms, supercells with the chance of tornadoes. So this is just a basic index here. Um, and just like all of these, it just is limited to a couple different levels. In this case, it's the 850 millibar and 500 millibar levels, whereas the K index is just 850, 500, and 700 millibars. The lifted index is just at 500 millibars. So it doesn't take into account all the different levels of the atmosphere. So it, you know, just because the lifted index is negative four, doesn't mean that we're going to see thunderstorms. We have to find a way to a way to erode this layer of convective inhibition here, which is going to take a lot of effort. So just because you have these uh, indices that are you know indicative of a you know unstable atmosphere, doesn't mean that you're going to see thunderstorms in the afternoon. You, we they don't take into account all the other levels of the atmosphere where we may have inversions like we see here, etc. So Again, these are just kind of broad brushed sort of parameters. And before we go summarize here, our total totals index is 51. So that's pretty much it here. We've gone through most all of the parameters that you can calculate using a skew T for this given example. And that'll wrap up this little mini series within the bigger series on um, these parameters and how you can calculate them from calculate them from from a skew t. So if we would have if we would, you know, characterize this atmosphere in a, just a short um, sort of brief way from these parameters, you know, you could say that the atmosphere is somewhat unstable. Um, we've got sort of elevated instability above this sort of layer of pretty decent convective inhibition here. So we do have a chance for thunderstorms later on if we can get some sort of lifting mechanism to erode this um, convective inhibition layer. So that's pretty much it. So we'll talk about in the next video actually applying some of these um, these skew T's, looking at different characteristics of skew T's and how they can modulate what you'll see as far as thunderstorm potential, the kind of severe hazards you might expect from a given setup, etc. So that wraps it up here. Hope you learned something from this video, and we will uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.